This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! We're continuing end of chapter 10. Apparently there are 12 chapters. Apparently the whole game plus the bonus stuff takes 15 hours to go through. Admittedly, it's going to take longer for me because I talk and voice act and I'm not just reading it. I'm actually like playing it. But regardless, I'm confident we can finish it tonight. So here we go. End of chapter 10. Let's go, baby. At first, I thought it was a dream. I was staring at this strange sheet, not really understanding what it was. That was all. I didn't go after it, nor did I ridicule it. The fact was that the boring view was the ceiling of my own room, but I didn't realize that for a fairly long time. Yes. I thought I had been dreaming, but I had actually been staring at the ceiling the whole time. Lethargy induced by the voices of the cicadas. Even after I realized I was awake, I couldn't draw forth the energy to sit up. Everything I could see, everything I could hear, everything was like a television broadcast that had already ended. It was hot. So hot I could choke on the heat. My back was moist with night sweats, and it felt gross. Unable to endure it any longer, I tossed in my futon, and finally blood started coursing through my brain. I lazily recalled the long day I had yesterday. The reality, as I lay here listening to the voices of the cicadas, and yesterday so different from it. In order to kill Satoko's uncle, I had rehearsed, formulated a plan, and dug a hole. It was very hot, and I was tired, wasn't I? And when evening came... I went to school and called him out on the phone. I panicked for a moment when he asked where the police station was, but it worked out. And then I awaited him and swooped down. I couldn't remember any more what sort of emotions I'd let control my body. In any case, it didn't go smoothly, but I did it. It was very hard to dig the hole for the body. That feel of the rain pelting down on me. I don't think I'll ever forget it. The rain, the mud, and the sprays of blood. The sensation of floundering in a swamp. When I met Takano-san on my way home, that wasn't good, no matter how I interpreted it. It was the most misfortune and uncalculated thing that had happened that night. Everything would have been perfect if only I hadn't encountered her. Well, he's about to get a pleasant surprise, because we're going to get news that she quote-unquote died. So he'll be like, yes, it was the perfect crime, even though it definitely wasn't, because we weren't at the festival strangely, and we told Mion, like, hey, can you take care of Satoko? And we also asked Mion to kill the guy for us the day before. Yeah, uh, this is definitely not going to go bad. <laughs> I was just riding my bike, with my shovel in one hand, through the downpour, utterly soaked. You're going to predict he can't find the shovel, but can't find evidence because of his friends? <laughs> or he'll find out, but he can't find evidence because of it? Uh, oh, for OEC, yeah, potentially, yeah. There was no way someone could surmise I was a murderer bu burying a body just from that information. Now that I was thinking calmly, napping under the morning sun, that's what I thought. Still, the more I thought about Takano-san's eyes, it seemed like she understood. Takano-san, she knew that I'd killed someone, buried them, and that I'd been on my way home, exhausted. Takano-san wouldn't gain anything from selling me out to the police, but that didn't mean I could feel at ease. Yeah, I don't think that would have helped. I had crossed such a bridge to get my tranquil life back, and I'd finally achieved it as a result. But now, for the rest of my life, for all the tranquil days starting today, I'd have to live in fear of when they could suddenly end. I may have twisted my ankle, dulled from total exhaustion, the fact that I couldn't make the snap judgment I needed to, I regretted it more and more as time went on. You didn't have a choice, Keiji Maibara. You didn't have any choice at that time. You were tired. You were a mess. Even if you had made the decision, you might not have even been able to kill her. Yeah, you had to chase Tepe for ages. And I, I know that she probably is not as physically tough as Tepe, but she's probably more athletic. And she probably easily could have, you know, like, um, gotten in her car and run you over, so... I don't think that would have helped. She might have just beaten you instead. In that sense, parting ways uneventfully could have been the safer option. No matter how sharp Takano-san's intuition was, she had no proof. 
Her suspecting me didn't amount to evidence by itself. That's true. I know! Tomotake's great! Uh, I don't, well, keep in mind, Tomotake, if, if this goes consistently with the previous chapters, would have clawed out his own throat. So I don't know how she would make him do that, but... At the very least, like, she didn't want to be... She didn't want anyone knowing she was around that area, which is why she's like, We never spoke, understood. <laughs> yeah. I want to know what's going to happen with Rena and Shion. Because Shion's only been this for, in this for a tiny bit, but she knows about the Satoshi stuff and seems to be... She got very aggressive towards us when we talked about him transferring. So I feel like she's going crazy, and we know Rena's going crazy. She got the crazy eyes multiple times during this. So it's definitely not over. Just worry about it when the time comes. Now isn't the time to be worrying. It's the time to be smiling, right? You accomplished so much just to gain a new life starting today, didn't you? Then you should be happy at this new morning. If remembering the past is too hard for you, then just consider everything up to yesterday as having never happened. You said so yourself. You'd bury it all like it had never happened. Well, your wish came true. Everything before yesterday never happened. So be happy, Keiji Mayabara. Why? Yay. I stuck up my hands lazily. <laughs> Life insurance? Uh, maybe. I'll do more humongous entertainment when the time has come. It felt a little silly for me to be the one doing it. I heaved a sigh from deep in my belly. That sigh got my lungs moving. It felt like I hadn't been breathing until just now. It wasn't enough to admonish myself over. All the dice that could be thrown already had been. Oh! Oh, good! Okay. Now, now Twitch chat is showing up. On the restream. Okay, that's good. Yay, dinner's important. I actually just finished up dinner myself before uh, starting this. And the numbers that turned up weren't bad at all. If I lost those numbers, then I'd just have to give up, I guess. I grabbed the chest of my pajamas and flapped it back and forth. Cool air flowing through over my sweating body. Okay. Nothing before yesterday happened. Nothing. Nothing at all. I'd forget it all. Yesterday was all a dream. What time was it? About midday. Getting myself and up and going to school this late seemed kind of absurd, but I needed to go. I felt like going to school would be the first step into my peaceful new life. They're going to be like, Keiichi, what did you do yesterday? And he's like, um, I, sl I slept. They're like, really? I didn't care how late it was. I would go. I'd go to school right now and get back to the life that I'd retaken as soon as I could. My lazy body immediately became lighter at the thought. I rolled up out of the futon, bounced onto my knees, and leaped upright. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. he's very naive, just like, oh yeah, like, the guy's gone, so Satoko's A-OK -okay again. It's like, um, sure. I stuck up my chest with pride at my gymnast-like post, and then pose, and then took a deep breath of fresh air. The brisk morning air had been gone for a while, replaced by the crisp air of more summer. Downstairs, I got a stern talking to by my mother. Where were you last night? When did you get back? You need to tell me what you won't be home for dinner. Things like that. But considering the importance of what I'd accomplished yesterday, a little scolding was no problem. In fact, it even felt like the sort of thing that would happen in such a peaceful life. <laughs> what did we tell Mom where we were? Uh, I went to the festival. I called Rena. You weren't there. Dang it. <laughs> I listened with an irresponsible smile and then stepped out into the sun high overhead. It was around the time that lunch break would be ending. Jeez Louise! How late did you sleep in? I, I know, he went to bed pretty late, but still. Everyone would probably be worrying about me. I didn't go to the festival, and now I wasn't at school. Well, maybe they weren't too worried about it. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Since they would have gotten a small piece of news, but a happy one from Satoko today. Satoko doesn't know what happened to her uncle. Yes, the small piece of news, that her uncle hadn't come home last night. Satoko would probably live her days in nervous tension for a while, thinking he might still come home. But eventually those days would end. And finally, Satoko too would realize her uncle was never coming back. But weren't you just saying you would have to constantly worry about Takano uh, outing you? Isn't that going to be the same for Satoko? She doesn't really know if her uncle is gone. And then, Rika would quietly invite her. She would say, you can live with me again. And everything would go back to normal. Our lives would go back to how they were before the man appeared. Satoko would start wearing that extraordinary smile, complete with those protruding canines, and fool everyone with those traps she was so proud of. I'd probably be your first target out of everyone, but I wouldn't be mad. 
In fact, I might actually shed tears of joy at the return of something so normal. Satoko. She'd gradually grow back into that meddlesome personality of hers. I mean, my lack of useful life skills was already completely exposed. I wonder if I'd ever be a match for Satoko. But that would be such a pleasant thing to see, too. And with such warm, fuzzy predictions, I didn't feel bad for going to school so late. This is a man- now that's a man who cares about his education! In fact, I wanted to run there now and to get there as soon as I could. Instead, I decided to savor the peacefulness of just going to school like normal without running. Doesn't he have to go back and take some important evidence that he left behind? Like the lantern? Or the shovel? No, he has to dig in the hole that he dug. Unless he's just like, eh, it's fine, I'll leave it there. The world I'd obtained for myself, that gave me joy just by walking like this. Yes. The world beginning on this very day was something I had won. Without that monumental feat yesterday, I would have never been able to come to school so cheerfully today. Uh, Keiichi might have had better luck killing the uncle not on the festival day. The school gate came into sight. Just then, I heard the principal ringing the bell to mark the end of lunch break. It was a clear, refreshing sound. I stopped to spite myself and let myself take it in. Tap. I had stopped suddenly. So there was an extra footstep. With a noise, the blessedness I was feeling, throughout my whole body, withdrew into any pore I could find. As if to replace it, I felt like hundreds of hairy caterpillars were climbing up my feet. Your sins are crawling on your back. I turned back, but of course nobody was there. Oh boy, he's getting paranoid now. A single footstep could have easily been my imagination. But the footstep felt so ominous. That extra footstep I had heard, after seeing Takano san off last night, with everything that happened on that insane night, I didn't mind something like that happening once. It had been a hell of a night, after all. In fact, having just one hallucination was pretty fortunate. But those footsteps should have ended with yesterday, so if I heard them again today, there was really only one thing it could have meant. Last night still wasn't over. Oh, oh, great. It was still going. Yeah, because you killed somebody. That's going to stick with you for the rest of your life. Hey, Liz, how's it going? Still, that insane night, forever. The step I heard, just that one extra footstep, was quietly, quietly ridiculing the nonsensical notion that the world starting today was completely different from the one that ended yesterday. My classmates playing in the schoolyard all vanished inside like the tide going out. When I approached the school, it felt like that warm, fuzzy scene had ended, and it didn't feel good. Oh, that's true. We might be becoming a paranoid lunatic like we did in Chapter 1 again. Well, I guess we'll see. At the entrance, I took a quick look at everyone's shoe boxes. Satoko Hojo. She was here. Mion was here, too. And Rena, of course. Even Rika was here. Tomita-kun and Okamura-kun were here. In fact, I didn't see any missing classmates. If there were shoes missing, they would have to be my own. I took my shoes off and stuck them in, then took out some slippers. There wasn't a single pair left in the shoe boxes anymore. With that, they returned to their rightful state. Wait, you need special school slippers? But as I stepped onto the wooden floor, I noticed that there was just one pair of slippers left. Huh. Whose? Hojo. Satoshi. Satoshi, who had never been to school since, disappearing last year. Until now, we had committed the exact same act of violence, but I guess in the very end, it went differently. You couldn't make it to school, but here I am. I didn't repeat the same mistake you made. I wasn't about to let myself feel superior about that. In fact, I felt an odd sense of familiarity with him. A misfortunate bond with someone I'd never met due to following the same fate. I headed down the hallway towards the usual classroom. It felt like it had been a whole year since coming here. Hey. Did you forget Keiichi Maibara? Satoshi Hojo didn't really disappear on the night of Watanagashi, did he? <laughs> Satoshi Hojo disappeared a few days later, on Satoko's birthday, if I was right. I didn't know what day it was, but I couldn't say for sure I'd avoided Satoshi's failure, unless I remained here past that day. I have a feeling that's the day where things are going to go wrong. I was still living in that night of insanity. So this, this is what... I assume this is what would happen if you committed a great crime like that. You would just constantly be feeling guilt everywhere. <laughs> How's it going, Sanchez? Welcome to the stream. You finally caught up to the live... I Excellent! Well, you're you're here now. <laughs> Yay, what could go wrong? It's, it's going to be just a happy Halloween stream, right? But turn off your lights, just in case. The teacher still hadn't come to the classroom. 
The other door clattered open, the one the teacher wouldn't use, so everyone turned at once to see who had arrived. Everyone looked pretty vacant. Hmm. Suppose I'll greet them. Hello, Zuko here. Ohayou,諸君. <laughs> Prepare to be amazed. <laughs> Silence. When I started to think I'd fallen flat, someone finally started laughing for me. Rena. <laughs> Never mind, it's me own. Oh, that's right, we still have the console graphics going on. Yeah! Hearing Mion and Rena's cheerful voices made me realize how dumb those dark feelings I've been having at the entrance really were. At the festival at all, remember? Before I could say that, Rika smiled at me. She ain't smiling there. What's going on? <laughs> How dare you. Oh, wait. Hang on. And whoop. There we go. Now I have my thumbnail. Nope. Not the Windows button. Space bar. Okay, so, so she's smiling in the remake art style, but not in the other one. All right, here we go. You saw a baby dressed as a boy character? That's cute. I have not seen any trick-or-treaters around this area, because I don't live in an area where there are many trick-or-treaters. <laughs> and also, it's not great weather tonight. <laughs> Ren is covering for me. Here we go. <laughs> Unless my doppelganger was there. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Great. Yeah, they cover in for me. Mion starts laughing at the memory as she slaps me a few times on the back. Uh-oh. Tomita-kun was facing me and talking. There was nobody behind me. That meant he was talking to me? Oh, yeah, we know, but I guess Keiichi doesn't. Oh, no, they did the thing they did in Act 1. Or in Chapter 1. <laughs> what is going on here? Mm. Crying at a time like that is a feat only Furade would be allowed to do," said Okamura-kun, heavily breathing from his nose. "What? Why did, wasn't their voice acting? <laughs> they forgot to give him. They forgot to make him voice act that line. They're just like, shoot. We'll just put it in quotes so you have to read it. In my direction. Everyone laughed. If anyone but Rika had done it, it would have been against the rules. Rika gave her one of her nipa smiles as she listened to it. In my direction. Rena too turned to me. No, turned towards me. And then, with a somewhat embarrassed smile, she whispered to me so only I could hear. I also don't... I don't live in a great neighborhood for trick-or-treating in general. Most of the people around me are generally, like, people who don't have kids. And even then, our neighborhood is kind of close to a pretty busy road. We're, and there's not really a whole lot of easy ways to get here via walking. You kind of have to drive here. So nobody's driving their kids just to this area to drop their kids off to trick or treat. Yeah, they definitely know. They're covering for me. They're just they're like, okay, so he killed the guy. Well, okay, we'll give him an alibi. Either that or there's a fake Keiichi going around. But I'm pretty sure they're just like, haha, wink wink, you were at the festival, right? The class laughed at that, cheering and jeering. <laughs> this whole time, the conversation had been a little bit off. I wasn't quite getting it. I remember that from chapter one. That it, maybe that happened here too. Rena seemed taken aback, but when she answered, she did it with a smile. 
なかなか倒せないから額を狙ったり素早く何発も撃ったりしていろいろと試したんだよね Why are we getting the creepy music? それでケイチくん鉄砲を何丁もあらかじめ用意して素早く撃ってみせてくれたんだよね yeah, this is what happened in act, in chapter one. かっこよかったはぁ But chapter two was a little bit different Or it was actually quite different Wait Who was this? あの後の飲み会でさ町内会の会長連中にもケイちゃんの評判すごく良かったんだよケイちゃんの売り工場に惚れたって騒いでたのは子供会の君吉徳造会長だったかな That wasn't man who came to my house, was it? 次の祭りではぜひケイちゃんに何店舗か任せたいって言ってた徳造はお祭りの実行委員会の森田さんなんです My Barasan is great at making things sound good, isn't he? Yeah, that's the guy who had the, tie、uh, the Takayaki stand, and we're like, oh my gosh, this is the best Takayaki, even though there's no octopus in it. <laughs> yep, whenever he talks about something, it seems a lot better than it actually is. Ha 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 ha, you can't say that. Ha 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 ha. Kei Chikun is a great job at Uriko-san. Just get him a job at State Farm. I think he's a good job at the banana. I think he's a good job at the banana. Why are we getting the creepy music here, though? Didn't go to the festival in the first place. I swallowed those words. I didn't know exactly why, but in Hinamizawa, this is what had happened. Yesterday, during the Watanigashi festival, Keiichi Mayabara had appeared, and he had romped around with all the usual members of his club. He made a big scene at a few of the stalls, snatched a few sticks of takayaki and okinomiyaki in his glee, rating each of them as delicious or terrible to get everyone excited. Yeah, that's, that's chapter one. And they'd seen a gigantic stuffed animal at the target practice game, and everyone went after it. Hmm. And then I got a whole bunch of cork guns, firing them in rapid succession, throwing each one away while using it. And admirably, I shot down the biggest stuffed animal there was there. And then I gave the stuffed animal, with the proof of my victory, to Rena as a gift. Then our fun came to a close, and we had to go see Rika Chan's offeratory dance. There was a ton of people squeezed in there, and we all got separated, but we each managed to get into good positions to cheer Rika on from. Then in the middle, when Shion came up and asked me to go hang out with her instead of watching the dedication dance, I refused, and stayed put watching the dance to the very end. Yeah, it's a good thing you did, because if you went back to the torture shed, we would have had a repeat of Chapter 2, most likely. <laughs> 